Hi, I'm Wayne Allen Root for Personal Liberty. I've been glued to the television set for days, just like the rest of America, watching the violence and unrest going on in Baltimore. I'm here today to make a statement and to ask an important question. This statement is simple. It's time for black America to stop blaming others for their problems. It's time for black America to blame black America. And the important question is, does black violence matter? Because we know that black protesters think black lives matter. We all agree on that. Black lives do matter. And we know they march every day with those signs. Every time a black youth is shot by the white cop, we see those signs, black lives matter. But when blacks murder other blacks, no signs. When blacks riot and burn their own black neighborhoods, no signs. When blacks loot and burn black businesses, no signs. When blacks try to hurt, maim, or kill police officers, no signs. Does that mean that black violence doesn't matter? Here are some more important questions. Here are the people and groups black Americans should be questioning and blaming. Where are the black fathers in Baltimore? They don't exist. I saw black mothers in the streets. I saw black male teens riding in the streets, but no black fathers trying to keep their kids off the streets and away from violence. The real issue is that the welfare state has destroyed, has decimated the black family. The protesters should be carrying signs that say, black fathers matter. Did you see that heroic mother screaming at and hitting her own son to keep him from joining the mob? She did what any mother should do to save her son's life or prevent him from going to jail and ruining his life. But where was her husband while her son was about to ruin his life? Where was that kid's father or his grandfather? There are no adult men in this tragic and dysfunctional picture. Here's an important question. Where's Obama? Our nation's first black president was silent that whole first day as black Americans tore apart a major American city. He's quick to weigh in and assign blame every time one black kid gets shot by a white cop, but not a word when thousands of blacks rampage and terrorize a city. Not a word about black on black crime, rioting, looting, burning, or murder. Sure, he weighed in the next day from the safety of the Rose Garden, but only when he had no choice. He was cornered by journalists who demanded a comment, but he was a day late and a dollar short. Why wasn't Obama boots on the ground at the scene? Baltimore is in his backyard. He could almost walk from the White House. He got almost 90% of the black vote just two years ago from those same neighborhoods. He has plenty of time to go golfing and fundraising, but no time to walk a major American city in his own backyard that's burning to the ground at the hands of black Americans? Freud would have a field day with Barack Obama. Here's an important question. Where's the mayor of Baltimore, the black mayor of Baltimore? She clearly ordered police to stand down, make no arrests, stop no crimes, while her city was being burned and looted. She was sworn to protect those business owners, and she did nothing as their businesses burned to the ground. But she wanted to create a space for those that want to destroy. Those were her words, and then she blamed the media for merely repeating her words verbatim. What's the excuse of the day? There's another important question. The excuse in the past was blacks felt powerless with white politicians and police in charge. Well, Baltimore is under 100% black and Democrat control. You mean blacks feel powerless with a black mayor, black city council, black police chief, minority, majority police force made up of a majority of people of color? When do the excuses end? When do you stop blaming others? Where are the black leaders? There's an important question. Sharpton, Jesse Jackson. They all had a week to see what was simmering. When the mayor locked the fans in Baltimore Orioles Stadium on Friday night for their own protection, it was pretty clear something bad was coming, yet not a peep out of Aller Jesse and no preparation by the mayor or the government. Here's a good question. Where's our government when taxpayers need protection? I saw a store owner on the national news two nights ago. Her store was a fixture in Baltimore for 30 years in that neighborhood, and now it's wrecked, destroyed. All her goods stolen, her employees laid off. So what good is government if they can't even protect a store owner and a taxpayer? Now, I'm not a big fan of government, unlike Democrats. I'm a libertarian conservative. I think government's a mixture of incompetence, evil, and, and thievery. The perfect storm. There's only one thing I think government's there for, protecting our lives and protecting our property from criminals and foreign enemies. That's it. And they can't even do that. That store owner paid property taxes for 30 years, and the city stood by while her livelihood was destroyed. What a joke. What fraud. She deserves an instant refund of all 30 years of her property taxes. Now, the mafia demands 10% for protection mo money from a business owner, and then they actually do protect us. Government calls that fraud, and they put the mafia in jail for that. But the government demands 50% of our money, and then they stand by and don't even protect us as our store is burning down or being looted.
Guess what? I choose the mafia. It's a much better deal. <laughs> How about the war on poverty? How's that worked out for black America? The longest and most expensive war in American history has been in place since the 1960s in LBJ and inner cities like Baltimore look the same. Same poverty, same hopelessness, same anger and violence, same rioting and blame and excuses after $22 trillion has been spent, more than all the wars in the history of America combined. And the results are nothing. The achievement is nothing. Here's a question for black America. How has having the first black president helped your cause? With black unemployment doubled out of whites, who's to blame? With the economy on death watch and 0% GDP growth, who's to blame? With the workforce participation rate at a modern day low for blacks, who's to blame? With over 100 million Americans on welfare checks of some kind, who's to blame? With black poverty at modern day highs and the first black president, who's to blame? I heard ultra liberal and pathetically politically correct CNN analyst Sally Cohen blame white America. She wished white America would be half as outraged over police violence as they are over the rioting. Well, I have a message for Sally Cohen. I wish black Americans would be half as outraged over black on black violence, black on black murders, black gangs, black drug dealers, black looting, black burning of black small businesses, black rioting, as they are about one white cop killing one white kid. And one more thought for Sally and liberals like her. What is 50 years of black rule, liberal welfare and entitlement policies, excuses and blame towards white people and Republicans done for black Americans in inner cities like Baltimore and Detroit? Where's the progress in those cities over 100% Democratic politicians and Democratic policies? The sighting of a white Republican on the streets of Detroit and Baltimore is nothing more than a rumor. There were no Republicans or white people when I looked at that podium during the rioting with the Baltimore mayor, it was 100% black leadership, yet urban inner cities like Baltimore and Detroit are in ruins. It's time to take personal responsibility. Slavery was a long, long time ago. My Jewish relatives were enslaved by Hitler and the Nazis much more recently than your ancestors were enslaved by the South. But I don't care. It doesn't affect my life. It's time to move on. It's time for you to look for jobs, not welfare. It's time to look within yourselves. It's time to stop blaming others. It's time to blame black fathers and black leaders and a black president. It's time to ask what the Democratic Party has ever done for you except ensure you're helpless, hopeless, and dependent on government to survive. It's time to blame the $22 trillion war on poverty. It's time for black Americans to blame black Americans. I'm Wayne Allyn for Personal Liberty. See you next week. Get ready for my most explosive column ever. It's the biggest story of my life. It's an expose of crimes, targeting, and intimidation by Obama, the Obama administration, and the IRS. It's factual, direct from my personal IRS files obtained by Judicial Watch under the Freedom of Information Act. Wow, this is the biggest story of my career, and it could take down this corrupt government once and for all. When you hear the revelations, you won't even believe what was written in my IRS files. See you next week. God bless America.